Uh, I am going to talk about uh, dry land agriculture. Uh, of course, it is uh, going to be a refresher uh, training for you. I am going to give some uh, basic principles and uh, strategies for uh, managing uh, dry farming or dry land agriculture and the technology also. In addition to that, I am also going to give some aspects of nanotechnology application in the uh, dry farming areas. How best we can use this uh, nanotechnology application. This is uh, something new information for you. Others are maybe uh, going to be a repetitive one. However, uh, you can recall your uh, the subjects uh, studied in your graduate and the postgraduate programs. So, uh, in addition to that, I have added some more information. Um, general, you can say some uh, principles in Thailand agriculture. Uh, this must be there, then only we can uh, be successful in the <coughs> crop production and dry farming areas or rainfed agriculture or dry land agriculture. So, we must have some uh, minimum infrastructure facilities. Uh, that means uh, uh, either you store water or uh, land should be leveled or you have to construct uh, check dams. This uh, kind of uh, infrastructure must be there, first foremost important one. Then we have to conserve the whatever the drop or uh, rainfall received. Previous speaker uh, told about the forecast and when the rain will uh, going to occur. And uh, whatever the rain occurred, sometimes because of uh, the hot pan on the surface soil as well as subsurface soil, we cannot be able to uh, get through or penetrate into deeper uh, aquifer. So most of the uh, rain received in the dry land agriculture uh, run away from our field or uh, got wasted. So we have to conserve the whatever uh, moisture is reserved, uh, received. So store excess water if moisture, uh, in-situ moisture and in-situ conservation uh, in the in, uh, particular uh, field, we have to, if there is any uh, runoff, we have to store it uh, like a farm pond or uh, in an underground uh, strata. So excess water must be stored. This is the most important we have to advise the farmers. Farmers uh, may not be uh, aware of or reluctant to uh, spare some of the area which is uh, owned by them. So think that uh, uh, if they have one acre or two acres, they want to dedicate some 10 to 15 cents for uh, making a farm pond, they may be reluctant. Uh, they, they think that this is going to be a waste for them. So. We have to create some structures for storing the excess water. Then the stored water should be recycled effectively. Otherwise, no use of. Otherwise, it will get evaporated or uh, percolated to deeper uh, uh, layer, soil layers. So it should be recycled eff effectively. If energy you have some kind of uh, either maybe a petrol engine, diesel engine, or some nowadays uh, uh, solar uh, energy uh, pumps are available. So the whatever water stored, we can uh, use uh, that water effectively and every drop must be uh, used efficiently for crop production or maybe a livestock production or maybe for uh, any other domestic uh, purpose in the dry land agriculture. So uh, we are facing an uh, acute shortage of water nowadays. Of course, uh, for the past two years, uh, we are not facing that kind of problem in Tamil Nadu because of uh, good rain uh, both uh, northeast monsoon as well as southeast monsoon even in the winter also we got some rain last year so we are not uh, facing much problem but we cannot be uh, consider uh, this will be ever for uh, this kind of situations may uh, we get a shortage of rainfall in future so we must always uh, work on this area uh, to create a structure or facilities and advise the farmers and transfer the knowledge to the farmers if there is any situation like that occurs in the drought, so how to um, uh, encounter the drought is more important. So uh, the uh, classification, uh, we know there is a very, very uh, uh, marginal difference between the dry farming and rainfall farming. So if there is uh, less than rainfall, 750 nanometer, we call uh, the area of cultivation is dry farming, the 750 millimeters. So, uh, of course, Coimbatore itself under dry farming. Uh, we are average 640 mm only we are receiving. So, most of the Coimbatore district's area all comes under the uh, dry farming conditions. So only uh, certain areas receive more than 750 uh, millimeter of rainfall. So, millimeter of 750 millimeter means uh, that's called uh, rainfall farming. 
we cannot say whatever may be the quantity of rainfall that will be uh, assured of uh, getting a crop sometimes even with a high rainfall maybe a highly slope area is going to be based on so immediately at the sea soil will get uh, drained with uh, waters and uh, will dry quickly and also depends on the soil types so not only quantity of rainfall we can classify we got to classify based on the type of soil and the slope areas uh, only we can able to uh, successfully raise the crop so rainfall distribution erratic in the dry farming areas and in the rainfall conditions uh, somewhat even distributions and the potential evaporation exceeds uh, rainfall for most of the parts, most part of the year the evaporation will be more than the rainfall received so always in the uh, crop or uh, uh, soil is in a stark conditions so climate may be a arid or semi arid and the um, rainfall uh, farming is there under the sub humid or humid conditions and the crop moisture stress is very severe and in the case of rainfall farming the moisture stress is uh, very little or no effect soil water conservation soil conservation uh, moisture conservation is more important and in the case of rainfall farming because the rainfall exceeds 70 mm we have to take care of the runoff and the soil erosion controls otherwise we may lose the top fertile soils every year millions of tons of soils are carried away and deposited either in the ponds or lakes or in the dams see in the case of bhavani sagar dam uh, now we are saying it is uh, 105 feet but actually it is about 125 feet so around 15 feet are uh, uh, filled with the mud it is carried away uh, from the uh, slopey areas or in the nearby fields so dumped in the a uh, dam sites are in it goes into through river and as well as it will reach uh, sea so no, if there is any excess rainfall we have to have a, a check dams to uh, prevent the soil erosion so in drylands of if we take in india most part of the india are under a dry farming situation only or dryland culture only so the degraded lands most of the lands if we go to madhya pradesh you can chambal valley you can see the degraded lands and the farmers are very very poor farmers in the dryland agriculture because uh, lack of um, uh, support from the crops so small and uh, and marginal holdings highly fragmented holdings are very small and the groundwater table is very very uh, deep so if you see the groundwater table in on average in tamil nadu uh, so very deep na uh, it's about uh, 15 meters that means you multiply by 3.3 around um, uh, 240 uh, feet 240 feet you may think that it is a uh, very uh, shallow but this is average see in the case of uh, some areas uh, i know i am from uh, gobichetti palayam in my area they dug up to 2000 feet so think of how deep they have made up bore wells i think one day we are going to see other part of the world cross across the globe <laughs> this is the second picture Uh, it is also possible uh, making a hole across the globe and you can reach the other part of the globe without having any flight or any other uh, mode of transport this is a uh, way we are now going uh, for uh, uh, searching of water so they are using a uh, 6 inches bore 8 uh, inches bore automatic uh, bore well machines uh, without the intervention of the human being it will automatically fit every pipe uh, and it will dug the well so this is the uh, situation now prevailing in most of the dry farming areas of course uh, you cannot uh, bore across the globe and you cannot reach you know the center part of the globe is uh, the gravitational force is force is zero if you jump into the bore well even if it is uh, 10 feet wide you cannot reach other part of the world through bore well because if you go to the center it, uh, the gravitational force is zero it will uh, stuck over there you cannot move even if it is the entire center part of the globe is uh, cooled you cannot move so uh, uh, that is not possible but i am for example i am telling that we are making such uh, deep uh, bore for searching waters they are using uh, three step motors four step motors we are going on uh, uh, extracting moisture from the deepest layer soil layers and we are not recharging that is the important thing so nowadays only in Tha- in pambutur cities they have made some bore wells to recharge uh, lower aquifer uh, whenever rain comes so that we can improve the water tables so uh, the water table uh, uh, is on an average very deep in uh, tamil nadu as well as in other part of the india also so in uh, if res- respect to the rainfed agriculture or dry farming in agri uh, in india 
any region which has less than 30% of irrigated area is called as a rain for agriculture. If uh, total area, cultivated area is 100% uh, uh, if you take, irrigated area is 30% uh, and remaining 70% areas, uh, depending on the rain means, it is considered as a rain for agriculture. So 86% of the pulses and 77% of the oil seeds and 50% of the seed, uh, cereals are contributed mainly by the rain for agriculture. Most of the, more than 46% area in the India under rain for agriculture. Most of the produce uh, are, uh, food materials are coming from uh, trail and agriculture only. So rain for agriculture contributes 45% uh, of the food requirement and 40% of the population. Uh, supports two out of three cattle. So three cattle, uh, two cattle are depending on the rain, uh, raised in the rain for agriculture areas only. So cultivation of more than 90% coarse cereals are depends upon the rain for areas. If you go to North India, UP or Punjab, most of the areas are under rain for only because they are getting sufficient rain. So they are raising uh, wheat or sugarcane or uh, uh, any fodder, legumes or sunflower. Most of the areas are under rain for agriculture only. If there is any uh, moisture stress, um, because in the case of UP or uh, Jharkhand or Uttarakhand, the nearby Himalayan areas recharging the waters. So the water table is uh, very, very, very shallow. Even uh, with the duck one meter depth, we will get uh, water from there. We can get uh, artesian wells. They only they have used uh, filter point as that of in Kaveri Delta. So their uh, water source is uh, uh, from Himalayan regions and uh, the uh, lands are also fertile lands because in Punjab and all uh, alluvial soils carried by the uh, rivers uh, from the five rivers. That's what called as Punjab. So the soils are very fertile and the moisture are um, holding capacity is more and the uh, depth of the water table is uh, shallow. They, they need not irrigate. If you go to North India on the way to uh, any Delhi or any part of the North part, so you can see there won't be any channels and uh, irrigating people in the field. As that of in South India, that way in Tamil Nadu you can see most of the people standing in the field for irrigating or diverting water uh, during uh, day times. But you cannot see such kind of uh, activities in the north part of the India because of well uh, storage structures are formed. Only the southern part, uh, that is uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, these are all uh, uh, arid conditions or semi arid conditions, and we are searching of water. Uh, and we are sometimes we are wasting of water also during rainy seasons. So 49% of the rice and 39% of the barley and 14% of wheat and rain. But and 66% of cottons are grown in the rain for conditions only. So the constraint and the challenge in the dry lands, we know that the harsh climate, the constraints, and the poor soils, poor water resources. Poor soils means with uh, uh, the nutrient or uh, organic matter content. Uh, slow plant growth, unplanned livestock breeding. So the, uh, without the having a proper grazing lands or uh, fodder, they, they um, uh, propagate and multiply the uh, animal stocks and uh, uh, suffer for a want of uh, uh, fodder material and the subsistence farming this is a uh, uh, it's one of the uh, important um, informations always you can think of positive side on the subsistence farming that is feeding the own family not uh, producing excess whatever uh, they harvest they feed their animals and they'll take uh, for their uh, domestic purpose they may not get excess amount of food or uh, feed for uh, to sell outside so they're simply living in their own uh, the content life without uh, making a um, uh, profit. So this is also one of the uh, uh, advantages also you can say they did not depend otherwise. But uh, our contribution to the uh, central pool is very, very less from the subsistence farming. So this is also one of the concerns in the uh, dryland agriculture and the population pressures. We are uh, multiplying uh, arithmetically anything like our population is uh, going to exceed or supersede the Chinese population uh, by yeah, the that we are so, uh, This is also one of the pressure that too in the uh, dry land conditioned areas. And what is the challenges uh, that will get caught uh, hotter and uh, drier because of the rare conditions and increased extreme climatic events and uh, drought frequency. So uh, we cannot forecast the rain exactly because of the arid situations. The temperate situations like European countries or South American or North American countries, mostly North American countries, they could be able to predict exactly because the changes are, are the vagaries are very less. They could be able to predict the rainfall. Because of aridity or arid region or tropical regions, the, the, the prediction of rainfall is very, very poor and not stable because of the changing going on, changing because of the temperature rise, the adiabatic rate of the, uh, the temperatures. 
So low rainwater use efficiency and low crop productivity, high instability, land degradation and declining soil health, distress uh, migration moves people from uh, the village area to the nearby cities and desertification automatically because of uh, lack of uh, soil uh, uh, organic carbon and uh, we start utilizing uh, the whatever nutrient available. So soil become a sand. So automatically get uh, desertified or desert only will be there. So the, uh, the other challenges and strategies, uh, how to manage the challenges in the dryland agriculture means. So decline soil organic carbon. This is one of the important challenges and how to uh, attend or uh, uh, rectify this whole fact means decline soil fertility and low fertilizer use efficiency can be improved by uh, the cropping system or introduction of some green manure in between uh, one or two crops. If your main crops uh, are intercrop situation also. So if we are going with the maize crop in the rainfed agriculture or sorghum, you can go with a pulse crop so that we can able to uh, harvest the cereal crop and leave the uh, this pulse crop for improving the soil status of the soil health status of the um, uh, soil. So the biodiversity is an indicator of soil health. It is uh, declining biodiversity makes the soil vulnerable to soil degradation. It's also so diversity is very, very less. That means we used to go with only one crop. So several crops that is increased in uh, species or genus of the crop should be there. So diversified crops should be there so that we can avoid any drought or any stress so that we can get at least some assured income from that uh, crop and as well as uh, improve the soil uh, um, property. So soil compaction and the sealing due to the use heavy machinery of overgrazing. This is also one of the important area in all aspects, not only dryland ag uh, areas or rainfed agriculture or in the garden land agriculture or wetland agriculture. Nowadays, we are facing this kind of soil compaction because uh, the lack of uh, the bullock fair and the time consuming, we are opted for machineries. So machineries of initially we have introduced with the power uh, tillers, uh, low weighing machines. Nowadays, we want to go with the uh, um, tractors or earth movers or like uh, JCP or Hitachi. So these are all weighing about more than 50 tons or 40 tons weight, passing over every time uh, pressing over soils. If we use any rotavator, only the top soil is getting uh, tilted or uh, pulverized uh, below 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters uh, depth. You, are, you can see only the hot pan. Whatever rain received will be stagnated on the surface or run away. So this is the one of the important concern in the rainfed agriculture or in total agriculture in India itself. So we need to go with light weighing machineries instead of with heavy machineries. So salinity and alkalinity is the problem because of salt accumulation because we are extracting water from the deeper aquifer automatically soil will be get affected by the salt accumulation. So this is one of the things happening in the our uh, soils are uh, the what salts carried away from the uh, hilly zone salts are deposited in the lower uh, slopes also create problems. So uh, soil related concerns in dryland agriculture if you say red soil crusting automatically you can see the crusting of red soils and uh, sealing and consolidation holding capacity presence of uh, argillic horizons that is means uh, on the uh, soils, alluvials or illuvial soils are carried from the uh, different places on the uh, uh, hilly areas. Rapid drying of surface soil and shallow in depth. So in the case of block soils, uh, we face in the case of uh, Arupakote or Kovilpati area in the southern part of Tamil Nadu, low infiltration rate. Immediately after rain, the block soil will get deflocked and the holes or pores are uh, blocked. So water will not get um, uh, percolated. So it will remain on the surface soil and go as waste as through evaporation or uh, by if there are plants or there mean uh, transpiration. High erodibility because of the, uh, the water standing on the soil surface will take away all the uh, soil from the surface. Water locking will be there. So narrow range of soil moisture content for workability and uh, trafficability. So if there is any heavy rain, we cannot enter into the field. If there is no rain, the deep cracks will fall uh, uh, form in the black soils and you cannot use machineries for plowing operation or you want to go with this zero tillage or minimum tillage in the conservation agriculture. Now we are recommending uh, don't plow the soils. Don't go with the deep uh, plowing uh, operations. Uh, at least uh, use uh, zero minimum tillage with the seed by happy seed planter or some other uh, means of sowing so that we can avoid the compaction of the soils as well as we can reduce the weed incidence if there is no tillage means whatever the weeds uh, seeds set on the surface will not get germinate it will get affected by the uh, temperatures or um, 
uh, because of uh, surface all carried away by the uh, insect and birds so in the case of zero tillage or minimum tillage in the conservation agriculture in the rain fed areas we are recommending don't uh, plow the soils frequently with the heavy machines or uh, use the rotavators rotavator will only invert or uh, uh, tilt the soils very shallow depth pulverize the soil in the shallow depth the deeper depth will be compacted so this is other related problems in the case of slopey areas um, even in the slopey areas also we face this kind of drought even we heard about in the nilgiris uh, during summer they are because of rain all tea gardens are uh, drying like that so uh, excess uh, slope and it leads to runoff water logging in the low, uh, small area salinization terrain formation low biological activity soil crusting subsoil hot pan low cation exchange capacity also taking place in the case of slopey areas so climatic constraints already uh, might have thought about uh, or told about by the previous speaker so ab and the apparent weather includes erratic or uncertain it's difficult to predict the rainfall in the case of uh, tropical regions uh, because of continuous changes of uh, temperatures uh, there are diurnal variations day and night temperatures are frequently getting changed it's not a uniform one day you can see 23 degree in coimbatore and the next day you can see 27 degree in the night time so this is uh, because of uh, continuously daily changes of uh, day, uh, the temperature during day and night times this is lead to apparent weather uh, situations so and this leads to drought and less minimum length of growing period the growing period is very very less because we either will get a sudden downpour and may not rain for uh, next week or uh, through uh, two or three weeks so crop will suffer and will dry so high temperature is another reasons and wind erosions because of wind so wind erosion crop damage and uh, loss of properties also taking place because of the climatic constraints so crop management constraints also we face this kind of uh, situations if in the drought areas or in the dryland agriculture or in the rainfed agriculture lack of in situ moisture conservations that's why i said uh, uh, farmers are reluctant to allot a, a small area for storing the excess water so we are not is in situ moisture conservation see we use continuous plowing either ridges and furrows or beds and channels so generally in rainfed agriculture they won't make beds and channels or compartmental bundix simply they plow using the seed drill and take up sowing whatever sometimes even across the slope instead of across the slope they will go to along the slope also they plow so whatever rain received will carried away or move away or drain to lower slope areas and may not able to conserve the in the soil itself wherever it is received poor weed management is one of the important areas so we don't have any herbicides i will talk about this weed management and next after few slides so how to manage weeds in the rain for agriculture because the major concern is moisture so at the time of sowing we may not have a moisture uh, to get a, a uniform uh, layer formation on the surface soil for uh, application of premium and herbicides so poor drought management we don't have uh, how to manage the droughts either right? application of ppfm we are now recommending uh, pink pigmented uh, facultative uh, microbes that's uh, uh, also uh, and as well as uh, several uh, chemicals are we are now recommending but uh, uh, farmers are uh, are not ready to uh, this uh, uh, kind of management technology is adopting so inadequate imbalance input of fertilizers we still follow the uh, either uh, a dealers recommendations are blanket recommendations so not based on the soil uh, test values so and also they are not affordable because they are living in the dry areas if they ask the soil, farmers to bring the soil sample they may not have the mobility uh, or transportation to the lab or something so they are not following any uh, scientific method of uh, fertilizer application that's why it's uh, become imbalanced sometimes excess uh, potash and uh, low nitrogen and phosphorus so poor uh, plant uh, protection measures they are because uh, they are, they are, it's not assured in the case of rain fed or dryland areas so crops so they don't want to spend much on the crop protection or weed management or nutrient management so this is also leads to failure of the crops inadequate water harvesting structures i said uh, they are reluctant to allot a small areas uh, for storing their waters so absence or low level uh, farm mechanization some of the areas still they follow uh, the animal bullocks and uh, I, it's okay but coverage of areas very low so it's a traditional manage of uh, management of conventional agriculture uh, uh, we can use uh, country plow or uh, animal uh, uh, drawn uh, plug uh, uh, plow uh, uh, may not be sufficient to cover larger area in a quicker time short time so we can use uh, instead of uh, this animal drawn uh, plow we can go with a light weighted uh, power tiller operated machineries for uh, preparing the lands 
so agronomic measures what are the agronomic measures we can make in the case of uh, dry areas to get a successful crop means we have to advise the farmers or follow the uh, uh, this kind of technology summer plowing so that will uh, create uh, uh, dust on the surface which will reduce the loss of moisture which is already available in the deeper or uh, in the shallow deep zone so the dust mulch that is called instead of going with any straw mulch or plastic mulch the powder form of the soil itself act as a mulch so summer plowing also keep opening uh, the soil to receive whatever rain is received so uh, you can uh, store the, some of the moisture as well as store the, the store the moisture and reduce the transpiration the evaporation so chisel plowing once in 5 years or once in 3 years open up in uh, deep uh, soils by using um, the uh, chisel plow methods and deep tillage also useful and seed hardening technique we have to use well, so that the plant can able to uh, withstand the uh, drought for long times and quickly uh, germinate with the available moisture so pre monsoon sowing uh, we can go with the pre monsoon sowing with the hardened seed uh, will help to cover areas uh, uh, in a larger way so compartmental bunding is more important instead of simply using a seed drill and keeping open see in the first picture uh, the, it is simply use the seed drill without having any compartmental bunding so we got to have uh, some uh, broad bed furrows compartmental bunding dead furrows uh, ridging and tied ridging use of organic mulch if you have uh, any organic substances either may be a farmyard manure or a green leaf manure or green manure in situ grown can be used as a mulch use of anti transparents also chemicals can be also used and intercropping is most important for improving the soil health and some insurance against the uh, drought or in the case of anything erratic rainfall issue so summer plowing uh, we know the summer plowing and need not elaborate much on the summer plowing it will keep the field clean expose the soil borne pathogens and insect pests keep the top soil and in fine till utilize summer uh, precipitation by recharging the subsoil and to minimize the deleterious salt by allowing to dissolve and in run of water to reduce the weed growth and uh, retain some more moisture this is a use of summer plowing and uh, the implements available are listed here uh this is five times uh, um, tiller or eight times tiller can be used for this is all kinds of soil can be effectively used in, to conserve the rain water rain water and weed management also uh, maybe uh, destruction of soil borne pests also it is possible expose the peepa peepa and it will be reduce the edgar cattle i think it is not available not uh, problematic for uh, uh, rain fed groundnut it was uh, once it was a very much uh, problematic now we are facing this uh, hoppers so it's cost about uh, operation 750 per hectare and maybe a little high you, you can get it this is by using bromo nap so deep tillage also uh, break the hot dies not all the time with the deep tillage once in 3 years or once in 5 years if the soil is very hard and the uh, subsurface we can use this kind of deep tillage so which will break the hard layers facilitate fast penetration of rain water and enhance the root system subsoil uh, resources utilized more efficiently the resources in the subsoil so off season or pre rainy season tillage also uh, will have impact on the rain water intake and weed controls so suitable to area with hard pans already is a problem with the hard pans and the insecticide salts and areas with the textured prop, uh, profiles like alpha salts and related red soil areas so this is the uh, chisel plow i need not tell about chisel plow seed hardening technique we know the seed hardening technique we can use uh, Uh, many way either uh, simple water is enough uh, soaking 12 hours and uh, again uh, drying for seed drying 12 hours again the cycle is getting repeated 12 hours are 24 hours now the standard is by the seed science and technology department so it will uh, give uh, something uh, some kind of uh, uh, immune to the seeds if there is any uh, less rainfall it won't germinate if the sufficient rain is received the seeds will germinate and uh, will come up well and also with sand uh, uh, drought stress so far uh, a little extra time compared to normal seeds so the seeds with an high temperature also for prolonged periods so the, it will give little bit uh, higher yield than compared to normal seeds so seed hardening technique must follow so and also pre monsoon thing one of the important uh, uh, technology we have to follow so if the seeds are hard and means we can prepare the land and we may know uh, 37th week or 36th week we are going to get rainfall means because of northeast monsoon then uh, we can prepare uh, one week ahead of uh, the uh, now uh, rainfall occurrence uh, then take up sowing so that we can cover largely in the first rain itself get utilized by the crops otherwise we may lose the first rain and uh, for first rain can be used only for plowing the fields 
so then uh, we have to take up sowings and may not germinate properly because of uh, drying in nature uh, quickly the water will get evaporated uh, uh, may not get a sufficient moisture you have to put the seeds in a deeper layer and uh, the germination percentage will be less so pre monsoon sowing must be practiced for utilizing rain water effectively and better initial vigor of the crops uh, you can reduce the terminal uh, drought also sometimes uh, if you uh, delay getting delayed then uh, you can face at the time of maturity drought so after uh, till maturity crops will grow better quickly and if there is any drought you will lose the entire uh, total crops yield improvements you can see about 20 to 35% uh, yield improvements is there additional cost without any much additional cost intercropping is one of the we know already the advantage of the intercropping you can go with the sorghum red gram groundnut castor groundnut to sorghum and the sorghum green gram also it is possible in the case of uh, um, uh, black soils are uh, in red soil areas with the groundnut so this is the compartmental bedding the land configurations uh, enhance enough water uh, inventory in the soils profile for raising rabi crops on the conserved moisture so size range 1 to 5 cents each it's not the uh, beds and tunnels it is a compartments maybe is a bigger than beds and tunnels uh, com uh, compared to on, uh, the compartmental bedding this uh, 5 cents at least 5 to 10 cents we can make according to the slope uh, slope is uh, less than should be less than one percent. That one percent means every hundred meter, uh, the height reduction is one meter is called uh, one percent slope. So hundred, every hundred to one meter is called one percent. It should be less than one uh, meter or one percent. Soil medium heavy texture soil you can follow. The rainfall uh, here if it's less rainfall we can it's a good suitable. One farmer black drawn soil uh, uh, plows are used for uh, making a uh, sowing up. So this can be used in curry for uh, rabbi. Broadbed farmer comes cereal. It is a uh, machine is available so that we can uh, store the moisture and uh, use uh, effectively for raising the crops. So uh, my this is after uh, raising of the crop or sowing of the crop. You can make a dead furrows every 3.6 meters filled with the grounded cells or any other uh, crop residues. So that will uh, the dead furrow will act as a storage pot. So they will take some moisture and release the moisture slowly. Uh, to the side way to the nearby crops. So this is a dead furrow uh, is uh, making after uh, uh, the uh, germination of the crops or establishment of the crops. You may uh, sacrifice some of the crops also one of the one or two rows. So another important area is palm bond. It is uh, very lacking. So I am going to play one uh, video at the, at the end of my uh, presentation. The Pawnee uh, Foundation. So it is uh, very actively uh, working on the Maharashtra areas. How these uh, farm ponds or contour uh, uh, channels or uh, contour bunding is more important, converting the most drought-prone areas of Maharashtra. So uh, I will show you the latter uh, after my talk, uh, the, the video of one part. So agroforestry, growing uh, crops uh, in between trees is also important. And for enhancing water use efficiency, increasing water availability in situ and ex situ in rainfall conservation, that is water stored and rainfall, enhancing water use efficiency crop yield. It will give you uh, more water use. So uh, increase the water availability, uh, enhance the water use efficiency, enhancing the transpiration efficiency. That is crop uh, transpiration efficiency means not improving the transpiration from the crop. So for uh, per liter of water transpiring, how much produce you are going to get? So for using per uh, drop of water, how much uh, produce you are going to get? That is the transpiration efficiency. Addressing capability. Uh, building an institutional policy issues for enhancing the water use efficiency, creating infrastructures for improving the water use efficiency. So factors enhancing rainfall and the supplemental irrigation use efficiency are in situ water conservation practices, improved crop agronomy, like better crop establishment, plant population, integrated nutrient management are balanced nutrition of crops are more important. Though for farmers are uh, resource poor, so it is uh, yeah, yeah, your policy makers should address this uh, rainfall areas more than 46 percent of the area under uh, in india is under rainfall or dry farming so we have to concentrate more on uh, dryland farmers so how best we can uh, support uh, for getting uh, loans or micro loan loans or seed or input materials so that we can uh, have some uh, uh, additional income or improvement in the yield so improved crop varieties and cropping system for rainfall agriculture is especially very much important. We are concentrating more on crop varieties for the uh, assured uh, areas of irrigation. And the cropping system, what kind of crops can be combined with uh, the uh, main crop, uh, with the uh, uh, intercrops. So improved methods of irrigation application and better irrigation scheduling is sort of more important. How best we can 
use this available water effectively with this method of uh, irrigation applications and the irrigation scheduling so this is in situ water conservation contour cultivation broad bed and furrow flat on grade and uh, conservation furrows border strips uh, field bands vegetative bands also will all improve the soil moisture availability on the surface of the soil as well as uh, soil water storage in the deep layer so uh, water harvesting techniques uh, i said already there are many techniques are available as like dead furrow summer plowing biological barriers contour cultivation mulching strip cropping micro catchments and integrated catchment systems also so this is uh, some of the area we have to consolidate uh, the industry so water harvesting the contour cultivation also so in the hilly areas also we can make a contour uh, uh, bunch and it can save the water so uh, reducing the runoff and the rainwater uh, the recycling of rainwater from the bun and you can make a, a cement and soils for storing the waters for improving the water table we should not use uh, cement or uh, uh, the slab so which will prevent the percolation so want to improve the water table uh, you have to use the bare soil we can dig a pond, pond and allow it to percolate uh, in due course so that we can uh, the downhill area down slope area the water table will get increased or improved so the crop management options are uh, we can go with anti salts or insecticides salts in the soil order grasses and forages castors or pale millet pulses and groundnut wetty salts or sorghum maize sunflower we can grow alpi salts you can go with the bengal gram castor cetaria or sorghum or groundnut so these are all the choices of the crops we have uh, crida has uh, we have uh, uh, documented the the contingent plan for uh, the uh, tropical regions of south india so tnau has given uh, each and every district for the contingent plan so what are the crops you can grow what uh, the varieties we can grow when it is to be so uh, so take up sowing what are the technologies uh, crop management technologies to be followed it is available under the website crida if you want anyone uh, for a particular district and a particular season you can uh, download from the crida website it is uh, given by our uh, tamil nadu agriculture university agronomy department so the selection of varieties are also there there are i said you know breeding is important for uh, drought uh, uh, tolerant varieties so we have uh, varieties also in case of kambu ragi banyard millet kodam millet pani varigu this patch uh, little millet black gram green gram pulses and otherwise uh, fodder sorghum oil seeds also so these are all varieties can able to withstand uh, your moisture stress and uh, will give some at least some minimum yield so the strategies and vagaries of monsoon suppose uh, if you want to say the monsoon is not um, evenly distributed if there is a variations means there are different situation i'm going to give and each situation how to manage so this is inadequate and uneven distribution of rainfall means cultivation of low water requiring crop you got to go with the low water so bengal gram it's a good crop so in during uh, winter season we can get, go with bengal gram doesn't require any water at all otherwise uh, you, you can go with any uh, sorghum fodder sorghum also so grow short duration crops instead of uh, long duration 60 days 70 days or 80 days crop you can uh, you can choose providing the life saving irrigation if possible you can uh, produce life saving irrigation one of the farmer here in thailand area in kayamathur uh, uh, has given uh, is uh, one particular uh, uh, faced one particular uh, situation like that he has raised about 10 acres of watermelon under rainfall conditions so expecting every week uh, rain and uh, all of a sudden at the end of the fake and of the uh, maturity of the watermelon i could not get uh, any rain at all and also doesn't have any facilities for uh, life saving irrigations he, since he is a very poor in nature uh, unable to uh, transport water through lorry or uh, with mobile sprinkler or so on many other reasons so because of his poor nature he unable to pro uh, but provide the facilities for um, supplemental irrigations but the crops are starving and uh, each uh, fruit uh, uh, this uh, watermelon uh, plant is having 10 to 15 melons and all are uh, wilting all are going to uh, get dried so we need to uh, save the plants for at least one week or 10 days means expecting some water in the next week or next 15 days we uh, we, we come out with a technology a very good technology low cost technology uh, for that um, uh he himself uh, uh, worked on his own and found out that the fruit which is very close to the root he brought here uh, the, near to the root and make a small hole allowed to drip the water present in the watermelon each watermelon the the green is the light green color is 4 to 5 kg so it contains more than 90% of the water so that uh, 4 liters or 5 liters of water is sufficient to save the crop for at least one week or 10 days so that he can able to 
uh, save the crops if there is any uh, rain in the subsequent weeks means you can save uh, another sacrificing one fruit you can get about 10 to 12 fr fruits uh, after the rain so this way technology uh, not by the scientists alone not by the extension workers farmers itself they are innovators so because of the situation force them to find out some technologies so this is the providing life save irrigation if it is possible they have to come out with we have need to come out with some other technologies like uh, this kind of innovations so the long gap of rainfall if there is any long gra uh, gap between the two rains we can increase the seed rate so that we can reduce the loss and the spraying the urea solution providing life saving irrigations and weeding and intercultural operation also can be done early onset of monsoon means cultivate uh, pale millet or sesame late onset means you can go with uh, due to late onset of monsoon uh, alternate crop varieties cast a green gum or cowpea or sunflower dry sowing or seed soaking with uh, that seed hardening technique or complete weed control and the most suitable uh, crop for situation is under late dawns monsoon is sunflower so early season cessation means there is a terminal doubt we face sometimes select short duration varieties using mulching life saving irrigation is required decrease the plant population these are all if facilities available we can recommend to the farmer may not be possible or otherwise we can go with such chemical treatments somatel close like 240 atrazine uh, pmar potassium metal bisulfate or uh, psycho uh, cetyl alcohol or wax salt something film forming type so that we can reduce uh, uh, the uh, uh, transpiration from the plants uh, reflectant type also we can use the kaolin or some ash also can be used the lime water can be also used so that we can reduce the uh, temperatures in the leaf surface so that we can reduce the transpiration rate so dry land technologies for sustainable farming uh, you I will, I will skip this slide there are uh, uh, many possibilities are there uh, biochar we can apply compartmental bonding minimum tillage application of uh, uh, laser leveling of the field and tna micronutrient mixtures are recommended split application of gypsum and integrated application of organic uh, either maybe organic plus uh, uh, and inorganic fertilizers these are all some of the management technologies are prescribed for uh, specific crops uh, specific situation by the tamil nadu agriculture university so and uh, next important area i want to uh, cover here is weed management in rainfall agriculture as of now there are there were no herbicides at all for rainfall agriculture so because uh, the, the moisture is uncertain the lack of moisture at the time of sowing only we take up sowing after immediately after receiving rain sufficient moisture will be there we plow the field and take up uh, sowing and uh, level the field the top soil is very dry so the bottom layer we have moisture the moisture will be utilized by the seeds and will germinate but top soil weed seeds are remain viable may not get germinate because of lack of moisture but if you apply herbicides because herbicides are volatile in nature it may be get fertilized uh, or hydrolyzed or maybe thermolyzed because of temperature it losses because of uh, light it may loss because of micros it will be get degraded so we cannot uh, recommend or uh, give uh, herbicides which are recommended for rain, uh, uh, irrigated agriculture so this is the efficiency also based whatever you apply all get evaporated or lost so may not uh, uh, possible uh, this manual method of weed management is also uh, possible because of larger area coverage is very small moisture is the soil will be very hot so the the method we have tried or working on is uh, the controlled release of herbicides for rainfall agriculture the herbicides are encapsulated with uh, water soluble polymers and the polymers are stable up to 240 degree centigrade without affecting the, the the content present inside the polymers so we can uh, take up uh, sowing and broadcast the encapsulated uh, the herbicides and whenever moisture comes the it will the, uh, the polymers absorb moisture and expand and release the herbicides so that immediately after rain the herbicide spread on the surface of the soils and will take care of germinating weeds since the top soils are dry the uh, bottom layers are uh, moisture the seeds uh, our crop seeds will germinate on top uh, soils uh, the with the weeds are not germinated but after immediate rain it will germinate so that the, the herbicides which are applied that is encapsulated herbicides applied on the surface uh, after rain it will release the herbicides so automatically it will take care of germinating weeds whatever may be the days after sowing maybe 3 days after sowing or 10 days after sowing or one month after sowing it will take care of it will remain in the soils as such for very long time up to 60 days it will getting affected it will remain on the soil so that you can able to control whenever rain comes in the rain fed areas this is the one breakthrough technology we have developed in tnaiu in the nano science department myself 
the encapsulation technique this is the package of nano scale active ingredient within the tiny envelope of our shell see this is a the picture that taken under transmission electron microscope each ball is having uh, active ingredient of herbicides outer is covered with the uh, the polymers so the polymer will water soluble polymer that is one of the important area polymers are something about non soluble as well as water soluble is are there we choose the polymers uh, which are in nature of water soluble so this way we, uh, encapsulation technique there are different types of encapsulation advantages are there i need not tell as this this the powerpoint is going to be shared for you so encapsulation for uh, purpose we can release quickly or slow release or specific release or based on the moisture release also possible heat release pH release and so on so based on your requirement you can encapsulate our requirement here moisture release with whenever moisture comes it should uh, release the active ingredient present inside so we have used this moisture release technique so we have uh, so of course see that this is a ball a, a knitted fabrics are there if if the balls are very tight you cannot see what is present inside and the holes are very small if water is absorbed means the the, the knitted fabrics will ex, uh, expand and the holes will become larger and whatever content inside will will be come out from the uh, um, and the, the, the encapsulated capsule so like here this is the way little amount of herbicides are released for one moisture if another moisture uh, there is any available next time also to release the active ingredient otherwise it will be intact inside the ball remain in the soil for even up to 50 days or 60 days uh, whenever rain comes or whenever irrigation is possible it will release the herbicide take care of the germinating weeds so we have a uh, different methods i need not tell about these methods are uh, more scientific uh, manner we are uh, following so the indirect method direct methods for encapsulation techniques it's a very important technique we you start losing the herbicide property you have to uh, encapsulate the herbicides with the nano polymers or uh, nano uh, uh, metal particles so this is the final product i see the first one is we core develop and the core plus polymer uh, pss means poly serine sulfonate and ph in poly allyl amine hydrochloride these two are positively and negatively charged water soluble polymer which is used for encapsulating the you are uh, now active in whatever may be the active ingredient either may be a nutrient or maybe a pesticide or maybe herbicide you can encapsulate and you can uh, the core is removed mnco3 core is removed in the place of core we can put in the herbicide inside and whenever moisture comes it will release so other methods direct methods indirect methods or uh, solvent evaporation methods are there so these are all way we can encapsulate the herbicides and the spray dry materials also possible so how to achieve slow release means it depends upon the number of layers quick release for uh, rainfall agriculture slow release for uh, irrigated agriculture we are using in irrigated agriculture even after uh, the nk crop uh, period you will release slowly uh, the recommended herbicides and take care of the newly emerging weeds so there won't be any weeds at all in the case of irrigated agriculture if you use a slow release uh, uh, formulations if you release a quick release formulations it will be more useful for the rainfall agriculture as of now by study there is no herbicide recommended for Uh, rainfall agriculture so this is one of the important uh, uh, breakthrough we have, we have made in our university so these are all alternate land use i need not tell about the thrust areas the last but one slide i am giving this prediction of rainfall is more important already ramanathan has given uh, how to predict and the ways and means of prediction how the possibilities of success and failure the soil health improvement the improving organic matter content and weed management i said already this kind of uh, technology should come and the mechanization is more important for the local uh, specific cause and then the last one is practicing a, a permaculture that is the development of agricultural ecosystem in and to be a sustainable and self sufficient this is called the permaculture this is practiced in um, uh, maharashtra so before finishing my uh, uh, my talk i want to play can i have five more minutes yam uh, yam for five minutes or all over video so uh i'll come to you and then so the the case study i'm going to play is here it's happening in uh, maharashtra the pani foundation uh adle d d d d adle or video nal So it's working wonderful. Uh, all the dry farming areas converted to fertile uh, water.
In this one last year, these villages are facing a drinking water problem, scarcity of a drinking water. Hmm. Now you can see the ample of water. Mm -hmm. In just in one year. Just in 45 days. <laughs> 45 days of work. 45 days work, not one year. The story begins with the uber famous Bollywood star Amir Khan, who has a decades long career full of mega hit movies. He hosted a talk show that examined the problems that India faces and became aware of the water crisis that threatens the very fabric of Indian society. He learned that drought could be defeated and built a team of dedicated water stewards and founded the Pani Foundation's Water Cup. The Water Cup is a contest between villages in the state of Maharashtra to see which village could install the most water harvesting structures in a 45-day period. There are many thousands of villages that have competed, and the resulting structures equate to over 145 billion gallons of water storage capacity built in just four years. By my estimation, that would make this the largest restoration project on the planet. I needed to see this for myself. So I traveled to the city of Satara to get a tour of some of the villages with the Pani Foundation's chief advisor. I'm here in the state of Maharashtra with Dr. Avinash Pol of the Pani Foundation. We began with a visit to the village of Garavadi in an arid region of the state that receives between 200 and 300 millimeters or eight to 12 inches of rain in an average year. The village has a large watershed, over 2,500 acres. It has a number of ponds that would fill in the monsoon rains, but the upper watershed was draining water too quickly. So the groundwater became depleted. And in the dry season, the village had to bring in tanker trucks full of water just to drink with no water for crop production. But when I arrived in the village over two months since the last rainfall, water flowed over the roads. Green, verdant crops surrounded the village center. We were greeted by a large group of men who would accompany us throughout the watershed to see their work. The upper zones appeared to be primarily grasslands with rotational grazing of large herds of goats. The main structures used to harvest water here are called CCTs, or continuous contour trenches. These are the same structures that we call on contour swales in the United States. In the month of December, they started seeing a problem of a water scarcity. Every year. This year, they took a part in a water cup competition. This was the first year. They treat a watershed in a different areas. You can see the hilly areas. No? These are the three hilly areas. Mm -hmm. One is this, second is this, huh. third is this, and fourth and fifth, huh. fifth hilly areas. Mm -hmm. hmm. From the top, this started over. We, right now, we are on the top surface area. On the top surface area, we preferred a CCTs. The treatment is a CCT. <laughs> These are the CCTs. This is, it is made by the machines. It is around one meter by one meter. So CCT is a, I think, basic treatment uh, treatment plan in a watershed development. Hmm. This is the basic. Okay. Otherwise, what happens? The drop of water fall on the top area. Hmm. It will come directly. Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's why the rock is get exposed. Oh. If you create the obstacles, this is the obstacle. No? Ah. Yeah. The water comes from the top area. There is one obstacle. From here goes in a downside. Huh? There is another obstacle. It also helps to increase the ground water table. Come. See the moisture. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Andrew, mm -hmm. you, you just observed the uh, grass in this area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In some part, you feel a dry grassland. Okay. Oh. In some part. But in some areas, you can see a wet grass. 
this is a wet grass hmm. some area there is a dry grass why why this is a wet grass because of the moisture it's the effect of ccd the 6th november is the last rainfall last rainfall date is the 6th november yeah. so more than two months more than two months, yeah. than two months. this year rainfall is more around 500 to 500 550 millimeter mm -hmm. hmm. otherwise uh, it it is in a range of 200 to 300 millimeters that's why they are depend on tanker water no? yeah. Ah. yeah government supplied tankers government supplies to tanker for the drinking water purpose yeah. hmm. so this this is called the fall pond which is having a inlet and one outlet in this fall pond we are not putting a plastic sheet mm -hmm. um, otherwise percolation will not be happen yeah. ah. so this is for percolation and this not is for per irrigation per supply yeah. ah. this is for the percolation purpose there is an outlet hmm, of a farm pond once it get overflows it flows from there hmm. Hmm. again it will go downside into the cities okay. yeah yeah <laughs> this is the chain it is this is the interlinking yeah <laughs> few minutes back so we were walk from same area no? mm -hmm. but we never see a flowing water because it is undermined huh. mm. now it is get exposed mm. and this is the spring you can watch it mm -hmm. this is the result <laughs> <laughs> So that's the basic science behind it. Water flowing during heavy rains is soaked into the ground in the upper watershed using various water harvesting structures. These structures create obstacles to the water flow and then the water percolates down into the water table. When we go lower down in the watershed, that percolated water then surfaces as springs and a rising water table that fills ponds and waterways. The water is then pumped from ponds and wells to irrigate crops during the dry season. So now villagers can grow wet season and dry season crops and also have groundwater stored in reserve for when rains fail. This means that they do not need to import water in tankers or migrate away from the villages to find work when water is scarce. It means people stay in their villages with abundant food and a good farming income. Restoring water tables actually fixes a lot of social problems. When these people have a stable water supply, then they have a stable farm income. This means they don't need to leave their villages in search of low-wage work in India's megacities. The Pani Foundation's water cup competition is much deeper than just water, and we're going to explore that in our next episode, where we visit the village that won the water cup in 2016 and look at the next phase that goes way beyond the water cup, the Pani Foundation's prosperous village comp. Uh, that's all from my uh, lecture. If you have any queries or uh, 